corpse bringing the food. Tasty treats! Tasty treats! This started after I left the London School of Furniture. I built guitars in my garage for a while, and 25 years later, there are now 10 of us building our own brand of unique guitars out of our workshop in Canterbury. Hi there, I'm Alistair Atkin from Atkin Guitars. This is uh, episode eight of our workshop videos. Been a crazy week this week. Danny has been off uh, with the COVID. Luckily, he's all right, I believe. So, um, but that's meant that everyone's been full on. So. This week in the video, we're gonna get Greg showing you how he boxes the guitars, gluing the top and the back on. Um, and then uh, I think Mark is gonna show you some bracing and some wood selection. And if you hang on till the end of the video, I'm gonna be doing another competition for a free t-shirt if anyone's interested. So uh, enjoy the show. Since you last caught me here, I've been here, still doing the same thing. Slightly busy week this week, Danny has got the Rona. So uh, I'm doing my job and Danny's job this week, which is a barrel of laughs, so hence the mess across the counter. So I'm doing a few things. I'm making the bits to go on the tops and the backs, gluing those bits up onto the tops and the backs, trying to keep up with Greg, who is sandwiching everything together. So normally it's me and Danny keeping up with Greg. So it's a little bit of a challenging week. So at the minute, I've got one gluing up. I've got box of bits that I'm prepping throughout the day for the next ones and then for the next batch which is what I'd ordinarily be doing my Danny glues up I've got some tops ready to cut out um, for the next batch I've got some backs that I've jointed up and thickness up so we've got a variety in here so we've got some mahogany with strips which we use for our essential range a couple of those some mahogany without strips which go on our standard kind of Gibson style guitars J43 is probably the one everyone knows. And then we've got a batch of rosewoods as well, which is using our 37s. So it's just kind of trying to prep stacks of materials so that when Greg needs something, I can cut it out, race it up and get it to him. So it's a little bit like a chaotic production line today. And then next to that, I've got some more backs ready to be jointed. And somewhere buried around here, there's some more tops ready to be jointed. So it's a bit manic, but still fun, still cut. And Tom's still feeding us plenty of cakes, so it's all good. So that's my week this week. I am gluing the fingerboards onto the necks. How about that? <laughs> that's good, I like it. <laughs> this is the end of my part of the neck process, so I've taken two bits from the CNC machine, installed a truss rod, pared that down, routed the tenon, for the neck fit and put the inlays into the side dot inlays into the fingerboards made them their final size for whichever whichever nut width they're going to be and now I'm gluing it together and after this you can go to Phil when he does the final carve once it all goes together and then I can fit it to a guitar body tomorrow The magic straw. This one's nice and thick. It's perfect for this job. We use a slightly smaller straw when we're gluing the guitars together once they're finished. But you know, a nice big crude straw is perfect for this. <laughs> Can you take this seriously? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I can. I don't <laughs> nice thick straw. You can just leave big bumpy bits of glue to go dry, but then it makes it harder for the final carve and. Philip will moan at me, so we don't want that. So we're going to glue together a Triple O 37S on the neck here, which has just been fretted, and it's all it's all prepped, it's all been chiselled out, bridge has been radiused, and I'm just going to go and buff it downstairs to get any marks that were made during the final neck fitting. Tom was meant to glue this together the other day, but for the first time ever, we've got two of these in the same week to glue down this. That fits very satisfyingly on there for the 00S12 fret. 
and we've only got one of them, so that's why I'm doing this today. Okay, time for the bridge. This has already been pre-fitted, it's got the dowels to locate it. And I'm gonna trust that Tom did a good job because if it wasn't me, I'd be in there. We'll soon find out. I'm sure it's perfect. This call is like the leaning tower of Pisa, so it's a bit, until you've got it clamped, it's a bit precarious, so. So here we have the straw of finesse, much smaller than the straw we use for <laughs> cleaning up the mess in the other room. So these straws are great because they just get pretty much 90% of all the glue off. And you do the rest with a damp cloth. It's really quite efficient. Right now, Raph, I'm just in the process of, we've just taken two J43s out of uh, out of the dishes, so those have been glued up, and we're gonna take them downstairs shortly, do some routing, uh, get them ready for binding. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we are a man down this week, so uh, we need to sort of pull our, pull our socks up, as it were, uh, and we're just sort of, um, trying to get everything boxed and closed this afternoon. So we're doing 10 obviously per week. And we want to get all 10 boxed by the end of Thursday so that they'll be ready for neck fitting on Friday, once they've been down. So we're just putting some tail blocks in this uh, J43 now. Essentially, the process of this is just a case of you want the linings to conform nicely to the mould so that it actually resembles the guitar that we're building, of course. There's not really, you know, we're not really forcing it into the mould because it has been bent already, but it's just a case of essentially, sometimes there's a couple of millimetres it might sort of spring back, so it's just holding it in there nice and tight to get a spreader in there in a sec. so that when we're putting the radius, the curvature, the dome on the back and the top, we don't want the rims to move in the mould, we want them to stay nice and stable so that it maintains that particular radius. Which matches the radius on the top and the back, of course, which Mark is bracing. You see, it's quite a wide-waisted one, the J43, so we're really stretching this spreader out, but that is in there now. We like to see. Let's make sure that that's all aligned nicely. So our centre line there, that all works perfectly. A little bit of glue on the old tail block. These are birch ply, nice and stable. Um, there's really no tonal implications of a tail block in a guitar at all, so you want something that's basically going to stay uh, sturdy and stable within the guitar structure itself. So ply is absolutely perfect for that. So what that's going to do is hold the sides in place and that will be dry after, I'll be ready for taking out after an hour or so and we can put the radius in the top and the back on our little uh, pottery wheel sanding radius dish. Fabulous little bit of kit we'll show you. Because there's always a little bit of spring back and it's just holding the, kind of really the, the edges to the tail block. So we've got a nice seamless 
uh, join and then just a little bit of squeeze out here. It really doesn't matter that it's, in fact that's good that you're getting some squeeze out shows that there is glue in all the contact areas of the tail block with the sides. I'm just going to clean that out a little bit like that. You can also leave the glue for 10, 15 minutes to tack off a little bit. It goes a bit rubbery, it's a little bit easier to, to scrape off at that point, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter when you do it, as long as you do it. The purpose of this is just to hold the, uh, the head block again to the rim. You really want everything stable inside the mold and not moving. If the sides are flapping around or sort of sliding from front to back, it's not good because essentially we want everything held in place while we sand the radius onto the top and the back, as you'll see shortly. Um, so this just essentially holds it in place. We've just brought uh, these two J43s downstairs for preparing for uh, binding. Now the first step that we're going to do uh, is trim, flush trim the top and the back. So flush them, trim, trim them flush rather to the sides. So that one's already been done. Uh, just going to finish off the back of this one and then we're going to start uh, routing for the end wedge and get, uh, get that and show you how we do that. Now that we've got rid of the lip around the outside on the top and back, uh, we've got a nice surface there where we can uh, route the end wedge now, uh, which is gonna, we're going to fit just after that. So we've got this nifty little guitar holding cradle style hole in the bench here. And what I'm going to do, just relocate the center line on the top and the back so we've got everything aligned nicely. There. Here's our high tech G. Just gonna clamp this on centrally, and uh, you'll see once we've got this all routed out, we've got a nice clean trapezoidal, it's a good word, isn't it? Hmm. Um, inlay slot for the, uh, for the rosewood end wedge, which is gonna be fitted in there, and then sanded flush. I'm gonna set the depth first of all, just for kind of half a millimeter, something like that. Um, just taking a few slow passes. I don't wanna take off too much at once and we'll minimize the chance of anything wood chipping out. So it's basically just a case of now fine tuning the fit of the wedge uh, to the to the slot basically. We're just gonna take a few passes on the old belt sander here. And it should be a little bit better fit than before. Yeah, so you can see it slots in there nicely, nice and clean. So we fitted the end wedge uh, nice and snug. As you can see that sits in there really nicely. So now it's just a case of actually gluing it in. So we use uh, CA uh, super glue. So what we're going to do is just put a liberal amount in the slot there. Make sure we've got plenty in there in contact with the sides and the bottom and all that. Slide this in just like that. Let's actually press it down a little. Drops of accelerator. Hold your breath. And that's all done. I'm going to sand that flush now. Thanks for watching the show, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe to the channel and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. 
And if you want to win one of these lovely Atkin Guitars t-shirts designed by uh, artist Vic Lee, you have to answer this question. And please answer it in the comments below. First person to do so will win the t-shirt. So who is this?